Hyundai's iX20 doesn't look like any kind of people carrier, but it's been designed to compete against Nissan Notes and Citroen C3 Picassos in the growing super mini MPV segment, and compete in such a way as to offer the kind of design flair, sound engineering, build quality and value proposition that will leave rivals looking square, utilitarian and out of touch. There are plenty of people shopping for this small but very clever class of car. The iX20 aims to be the smartest and most sought after of them all. Why don't people buy more super mini MPVs? For those who've owned or tried one, it's a puzzle. Though a growing market niche, this is still a marginal one that's usually forgotten in people's stampede to buy Fiestas, Corsas and Clios. Yet if you took one of those people and put them in something like this high-end iX20, they'd be pleasantly surprised. For the same kind of money, you get more space, flexibility, value, even arguably better looks. Super mini MPVs like this make sense. And so does the high-end brand, one reason why its sales have almost doubled in the UK in recent years. Now this is a manufacturer needing to be represented in more market categories and a segment which aims to offer MPV virtues in a super mini sized package is tailor-made for uh, the South Korean maker's value-led appeal. Since this design which under the skin is identical to a Kia Venga an identically targeted model which rolls down the same Czech Republic production line. Now both cars have been carefully designed uh, for European tastes but it's the iX20 which claims to offer better value. A bigger threat then for established players in this sector like Nissan's Note and Citroen's C3 Picasso. Have they much to fear? Let's find out. Now one of the reasons why people like MPVs even when they're as compact as this one is the high set driving position that gives the driver a commanding view out through large windows that contribute to the bright and airy cabin ambience. The well proportioned seats are supportive and I like the intuitive logical control layout plus the way that the instrument clusters backlit dials sunk into stylish reflection killing cowlings are clearly calibrated and easy to read. But how does this car respond on the road? Let's find out. Now this isn't a model that majors in driver appeal, the steering's light, the six-speed gearbox a little notchy, but all the really important family-friendly road-going attributes are in place. The chassis tuning was specifically designed for UK roads, which means that this car's a breeze to drive around town, and although uh, the refinement of this diesel model isn't uh, the most impressive I've come across, the suspension setup really is quite good absorbing urban undulations much better, not only than its design stable mate, the Kia Venga, but also uh, other class rivals like Nissan's Note and Citroen's C3 Picasso. And should you find yourself on a twisting back road running late for the school play, well-controlled body roll should mean that you'll get your offspring there without them turning too green around the gills. Not that you'll be going anywhere in too much of a hurry in this car, a modest 89 brake horsepower from almost all variants uh, is uh, a relatively small amount to haul around uh, a reasonably hefty 1.3 tons in weight. Uh, Resta 60 in the 1.4 litre diesel variant that I'm driving here occupies 14 and a half seconds. That's a second and a half slower than you get in the 1.4 litre petrol variant. Though a meaty 220 newton metres of torque means that the diesel actually feels the uh, more potent of the two. It's got more pulling power through the gears. Now a minority interest to these two variants is a 123 brake horsepower 1.6 litre petrol automatic although it's quite an old fashioned four speed auto box and uh, that old technology puts quite a dent in that variant's fuel and emission stats. Overall this car offers a driving experience that will give most prospective buyers everything they want and nothing they don't. Early super mini MPV designs look very boxy alongside this Hyundai. Come to think of it, so do some of the more recent ones. The German design team behind both this car and its Kia Venga cousin decided that such squareness 
was making super mini customers squeamish, creating a boxy persona that made the jump from super mini to super mini MPV motoring to greater one for mainstream customers to contemplate. So you get curvy looks that are part of a design language that the stylists rather pretentiously refer to as fluidic sculpture. You'd expect a practical downside though, wouldn't you? After all, fluidic curves are never going to hold as much as a squared off box. Or are they? Lift the tailgate and you'll find 440 litres of space on offer. That's almost twice as much as the Nissan Note that most customers choose in this sector. And uh, it also betters the uh, space available in Citroen's equally angular C3 Picasso Super Mini MPV. Nor can that French Challenger significantly better the 1,486 litres of space you get when you push forward these split folding rear seats. Pushing forward the seats sees them, the cushion go forward and down in one fluid motion, creating a completely flat load area that's easily capable of swallowing quite big boxes. Bigger certainly than could be accommodated by Hyundai's far pricier i30 estate and perhaps more surprisingly also 10% bigger than uh, Kia's supposedly design identical Venga Super Mini MPV. Now uh, you uh, get a choice in this car in the luggage compartment of this uh, false floor which you can either have at sill height for easily sliding boxes in or for taller items you can reposition it down at the bottom here and even when you do that there's a concealed compartment underneath for putting valuables in. At the wheel, it's nicer than you might be expecting. Bold in its design and well assembled from quality materials. There's a leather finish for the steering wheel rim and the gear knob, a nice fold out driver's armrest, a smart gloss and alloy effect finish for the center console and door inserts, and a surprisingly convincing chrome finish for the outside door handles. It all confounds expectations prompted by the relatively low asking price and creates a surprisingly upmarket uh, interior ambience. Okay, so some of the plastics aren't quite as classy as you'd find in some of today's Volkswagen Group cars, but they certainly look and feel sturdy enough to take on any of today's families armed with the contents of a Happy Meal box. And as we've seen already, Hyundai stylists aren't afraid to express themselves artistically. The speaker grills and seat trim pattern on this model, for example, echo the leaf-inspired design of the front grille. Such attention to detail continues in the back seat, where the accommodation on offer is not only thoughtfully laid out, but also remarkably spacious and uh, practical for a car that measures only just over four metres in length. Now, Hyundai loudly proclaims that there's more cabin space back here than you'd find in a Land Rover Discovery-sized Volvo XC90. That's due to these sliding seats. And though the seats in the Volvo might be a bit more comfortable, the, uh, those provided here are pretty ample in terms of elbow, head, and legroom. And they also recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. Now, uh, you also get a completely flat floor which will be welcome if you're one of those sat in the middle. Compared to older Hyundais, the styling of today's models may have become a bit more adventurous but the company's pricing remains resolutely down to earth. Expect to pay somewhere in the 12 to 16,000 pound bracket for your iX20 with a 1,400 pound premium to find if you want to trade up from the 1.4 litre petrol variant that most customers choose and get yourself either a 1.4 litre diesel or the very rare 1.6 litre petrol automatic. Now as for Super Mini MPV rivals, well unsurprisingly this car's design stablemate Kia's Venga is priced more or less identically. As for Nissan's Note, the market leader in this sector, well at first glance a 1.4 litre entry level version of one of those looks a bit cheaper than an iX20 but once you spec the Nissan up to this Hyundai's levels and added in an extra cover warranty. This Hyundai has five years after all. You're looking at uh, the Note being a £12,000 plus car and one that's still less practical and flexible than an iX20. As for a rival Citroen C3 Picasso, well uh, you'll need a premium of about £800 to £1,000 model for model 
to get one of those rather than an iX20. So you're going to need Citroen's traditional cutthroat discounting if you're going to match prices there. Perhaps a more interesting question though is whether it really costs more to buy this class of car than a comparable Fiesta, Corsa or Clio size Super Mini. The short answer is once you've specced one of those up to this high end level, well the answer is no and you're getting a far more practical car into the bargain. Whether you choose 89 brake horsepower 1.4 litre petrol or CRDI diesel variants or indeed the 123 brake horsepower 1.6 litre petrol automatic, you should find your iX20 to be decently equipped. All models come with air conditioning, a height adjustable driver's seat and a six speaker CD sound system with all manner of MP3, iPod and auxiliary compatibility. Uh, you also get on all manual models, high endies ISG integrated stop and go system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're waiting at the lights or when you're stuck in traffic. Safety wise, you can expect to find the electronic stability program, uh, integrated uh, active front anti-whiplash head restraints and front side and curtain airbags. Parents will also be pleased to note that there's Isofix child seat attachments in the rear seats. Given the huge annual mileage you'd have to do to justify the price premium required for this 1.4 litre CRDI diesel over its identically powerful 1.4 litre petrol counterpart, it's not difficult to see why most sales are to customers filling from the green pump. Thanks to Hyundai's ISG uh, stop and go technology which cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're snarled up in traffic, the 1.4 litre petrol model returns an impressive 50.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and are not quite so noteworthy, 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. The diesel in contrast manages uh, 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 114 grams per kilometre of CO2. And there's all the peace of mind you'd expect when buying a Hyundai. Even the brand's logo is a slanted stylized H, which symbolizes the company shaking hands with the customer. Now in practical terms, what that means is the reassurance of a five year triple care package, which guarantees five years of free vehicle health care checks on an annual basis, a five year mechanical warranty, and five years of roadside assistance. It's also good to note that the uh, six-speed manual gearbox requires no servicing at all during its lifetime and that insurance groupings uh, between seven and nine for 1.4 litre models on the one to 50 grouping scale are a notch or two below obvious rivals. Servicing costs shouldn't be too steep either as the Korean brand recommends 20,000 mile intervals between visits to the dealership. Once again, Hyundai has produced a car that offers stylish, economical motoring in a package that also provides impressive cabin space and load lugging ability for its compact size. Some other rivals are more engaging to drive, but the iX20 counters that with tighter pricing, higher equipment levels and lower running costs. It's a very attractive and well thought out proposition. Were I to buy one of these, I'd love to loan it to someone who just paid the same kind of money for a far less practical Fiesta sized Super Mini. Here's a more sensible choice from a more sensible brand.